This is a short video looking at public and private sector pay differences. There is often difficulty in comparing the public and private sector in terms of earnings because of differences between the two sectors. For example, there is a different skill mix of jobs and the age and pay distribution varies. The qualifications of those working in the two sectors vary as well as the percentage of men and women working within them. Also, the average number of hours worked differs. Starting with the differences in skill levels between the two sectors, we will use this example to illustrate the problems in comparing two groups. Here are two groups, A and B, and here are 40 people who are paid £9 per hour, and they all do exactly the same job, which we will call high skill. Here are another 40 people, all doing a lower skill job, being paid £6 per hour. If we move these people into the two groups, here we have 25 high skill and 15 low skill people in group A and 15 high skill and 25 low skill in group B. The total pay for group A is £315 with an average of £7.88 per hour. The total pay for group B is £285 or an average of £7.13 per hour. So taking the pay difference between the two groups gives us a gap of 10.5% suggesting that Group A is better paid than Group B. However, this is because of the different skill mix of the two sectors. So let's look at the skill mix of jobs between the public and private sector using information from the Annual Survey of Hours and Earnings in April 2011. Grouping occupations into four levels of skill and looking firstly at low and lower middle skill jobs, there are a higher percentage in the private sector. For the upper middle and high skill jobs, there are a higher percentage in the public sector. The importance of these differences is that earnings tend to increase as the skill level of the job increases. So, considering the previous example, it would be expected that, on average, the public sector would earn more than the private sector because of the differences in the types of jobs. Now looking at the age of employees in both sectors, here's the percentage of employees in both sectors up to around the mid-30s and here the percentage for the other years of age. We can see the private sector is made up of a higher percentage of younger employees. Looking at those aged older, we see the public sector has a higher percentage of older employees. Removing these bars and changing the axis to pounds per hour, we will now look at the average pay for each individual year of age. Firstly in the public sector, and now the private sector, and we see that earnings tend to increase most up to the early 30s, before falling off in the mid-50s, as it is likely that those being paid the most leave the labour market earlier. As earnings increase with age, and the public sector has a higher percentage of older workers, again, keeping everything else the same, it would be expected that the public sector earn more, on average, than the private sector. We will now look at the qualifications of employees in both sectors using information from the UK Labour Force Survey using two pie charts. Firstly, for those in the public sector, we see that around 40% of employees have a degree or an equivalent qualification and 14% have a higher education qualification. Now looking at those in the private sector, just 25% have a degree or an equivalent qualification and 8% have a higher education qualification. Therefore, over half of all public sector employees have the top two levels of qualification, compared with around one in three private sector employees. As earnings tend to increase for those with higher qualifications, keeping all things the same, again you would expect, on average, that the public sector would earn more than the private sector. So if we now look at the pay difference between public sector and private sector employees, using the Labour Force survey for each of the qualification levels, we see that up to the higher education level, on average, public sector employees earn more than those in the private sector. However, for those employees with a degree, those in the public sector, on average, earn less, 4.1% less, in 2011. Note that there may be other factors that explain these differences other than qualifications. For example, the type of jobs, which we explained earlier. Another important thing to note when comparing the pay between the two sectors is the pay distribution of employees. To illustrate this, here is a random selection of people which we will say work in the public sector, and here is another random selection of private sector employees. What we see is that the public sector distribution is more compressed than the private sector. This means that the private sector has more low-paid employees, but also more high-paid employees than in the public sector. 
We've explained some of the differences between the two sectors which make it difficult to compare the averages in pay between them. To account for some of these differences, it is possible to run a statistical method called regression, which aims to estimate the pay difference, keeping all other things the same. A detailed article explaining this method is on the ONS website. We will use this chart to show the estimated pay difference, and for consistency, it assumes employees of those banks reclassified to the public sector in 2008 were in the private sector throughout. We see the gap increased from around 2002 to 2005, before falling up to 2007, and then increasing from 2007 to stand at 8.2% in 2011. Note that there are other factors that could influence the pay difference, and this analysis does not include other forms of remuneration, for example pension contributions, company cars and health insurance. Also, ASH does not cover those who are self-employed, so it will miss many high-paid self-employed, and also some lower-paid. The timing of the survey in April means that only bonus payments related to April are included, outside of the main bonus season, which is normally January to March. And it may be that these factors would account for at least some of the pay difference.